embattled Congressman Matt Gates. Matt Gates was one of the very few members in the entire Congress who bothered to stand up against permanent Washington on behalf of his constituents. Matt Gates right now, he's a problem for the Democratic Party, and he can cause a lot of hiccups in passing the laws. So we're going to keep running those stories to keep hurting him. If you stand for the flag and kneel in prayer, if you want to build America up and not burn her to the ground, then welcome, my fellow patriots. You are in the right place. This is the movement for you. You ever watch this guy on television? It's like a machine. Matt Gates. I'm a canceled man in some corners of the internet. Many days I'm a marked man in Congress, a wanted man by the deep state. They aren't really coming for me. They're coming for you. I'm just in the way. Welcome back to Firebrand. We're broadcasting live out of room 2021 of the Rayburn office building on the Capitol complex in Washington, D.C. And I will be sharing my take on the breaking news on the Biden docs. We're just seeing drip, 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 more and more. Could be the sign of things to come. Also, Catalina Stubbe is the National Director of Hispanic Outreach for Moms for Liberty. She joins Firebrand today to show how the front lines of the culture war are indeed in the classroom. You will not want to miss that discussion. But first, news out of Ukraine. Let's put up the Reuters headline. Reuters reporting that Zelensky now says, fighting corruption, a top priority for the country. Now, that may be pretty telling, and it may be indicative that there are corrupt acts that are about to come to light. Now, maybe Zelensky knows that with Republicans in charge of the House of Representatives, we will be auditing the adherence of these weapons transfers that you've been reading about to their compliance with U.S. law. And it is my belief that we are not following the law now when it comes to the end-to-end -end monitoring of materiel that is required. But that does not stop some U.S. politicians for pushing for even greater U.S. involvement in the Russia-Ukraine war. Listen to Republican House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Mike McCall from yesterday on Meet the Press. He says, send in the tanks to Ukraine. Take a listen. So, Mr. Chairman, are you arguing here for the U.S. sending uh, Abrams tanks to Ukraine? 100 percent. We don't have to send very many. All we have to do is send enough to unleash what Germany has and what the 10 other countries in NATO have. NATO has to share the burden. One good thing that came out of Ramstein, the, the summit, was that NATO countries are sharing the burden. It's in their backyard. It's in their best interest. So with all due respect to Chairman McCall and even some in the Biden administration, I do not believe that we should be sending Bradleys or Strikers or the M1 Abrams tanks to Ukraine. And the argument McCall makes in that clip is that the way to unlock Germany getting more involved is for us to be at the leading edge of involvement and provocation against Russia. Why is that the case? Why is the argument that we have to somehow gaslight Germany in order to get them to do what might be very well in their national interest, but not ours. In fact, a top national security priority for our country should be restoring our stockpiles after everything we've already sent to Ukraine. Ukraine wants these tanks not to fight in Kyiv or Kharkiv or even Crimea. They want this materiel so that they can fight an extended war in the Donbas region in eastern Ukraine. Now, Ukrainians themselves have called this area the ungoverned region, even prior to this invasion. America's direct interests are not impacted by control over the Donbas region, one way or the other. I'm not even sure that there isn't less allegiance to Ukraine in the east as there clearly is in the north and south and the more Europeanized western portions of Ukraine. It's not homogenous in thinking in every part of the country, and we should not assume so, and doing so risks us sending materiel that pokes the bear. Now, this must be of greater interest to Germany and France and the rest of Europe than to the United States. And so if they want to send leopards, tanks, other materiel, I have no objection. They have to evaluate what is in their national interest. But the U.S. 
Sending more, sending tanks, that risks World War III for little perceivable gain when compared to the risk for our country. And so we'll be monitoring this quite closely. So let's spend a moment now on the Biden documents. Joe Biden cannot catch a break. I mean, you know, I have made the argument that you really know it's coming unraveled for Joe Biden when even Democrats on the Hill don't know what to say, don't know how to defend him. And Joe Manchin not only stuck the knife in Joe Biden yesterday on Meet the Press, he stuck it in and twisted it. Take a listen. We now have an FBI search into former President Trump's. Now we have an FBI sure. search into President Biden's residence. What's your assessment uh, of how the president has handled this situation? Well, I mean, it's just hard to believe that, that uh, in the United States of America, we have a former president and a current president. They're basically in the same situation. How does this happen? You know, the only thing I can tell you, Chuck, is when I go into the skiff with the secured documents, they always ask, are you clean when you walk out? Yeah. They want to make sure you're not carrying anything out. You know, and it might be a mistake. You might just put it in your other papers, but sure. you double check right there. So that, uh, to be held accountable and responsible is what we all are. And to put those in un unsecured spaces is irresponsible. Do you see similarities or do you see more differences in how President Trump versus how President Biden handled I'm not going to make that this? decision, but I think that Merrick Garland did the right thing by putting a special counsel. You do. And I think that we should wait until the special counsel rather than making this a political circus. Let them find out the facts. What was one more damaging? Are they both about the same, did not cause any problem? Or is one more reckless and irresponsible than the other? I can't answer that question, but I think the special counsel will do a better job than the politicians and the political circus that is going to follow. It is not good when you're the president of the United States and members of your own party are cheering on a special counsel that has been pointed to criminally investigate you. We've got the live stream up and going on Facebook. Michael says defund Ukraine. I certainly think we shouldn't be increasing our contribution to the fight. I would agree with Michael there. And Johnny on Facebook sees comparisons between the corruption in Afghanistan and the corruption fueling these decisions on Ukraine, I could not agree more. But back to Biden and the documents scandal. So hear me out on this. And I'm, I'm the only one really making this argument other than Tucker Carlson on the right. And when Tucker and I have a perspective and we're getting criticized from, you know, conservative Inc. and the left-wing media, it, it usually is a sign that things are going to be coming our way. To me, there is a distinct possibility that what you are observing on these documents is the deep state taking Biden out. The deep state wants the left to have control. And they might not care if they have to dispose of Joe Biden in order to keep it. Now, I discussed this case in point recently on Laura Ingram. Take a listen. We'll discuss it on the other side. Now, Fox is reporting that any decision from Biden is not going to come until after he delivers the State of the Union. So what do you ultimately expect that decision to be now? Well, things in Washington aren't always what they seem. Consider this. It was Joe Biden's Democrat personal lawyer that was rummaging around his stuff looking for what? Evidence of a crime that his septuagenarian client committed nine years ago. And then he alerts the Democrat staff at the White House that does the absolute worst thing you could possibly do. They sat on the information. They should have diffused the Trump matter and then inoculated themselves in the process. Then the moment this is leaked to CBS, you have the Democrat Biden. Biden Department of Justice appoint a special counsel. And now the big tell is that even Joe Biden's strongest allies in the Congress, like Senator Coons, are saying that they approve of the appointment of a special counsel to criminally investigate the president. Maybe the deep state and a lot of these Democrats have figured out that they'd rather roll with Gavin Newsom than Joe Biden. The Republicans might not even have to help the Democrats take out their trash. Well, Congressman, before President Biden answered the question on the classified docs today. He snapped. Watch. You know, the only I, I will answer the question, but here's the deal. You know, what quite frankly bugs me is that we have a serious problem here we're talking about. We're talking about what's going on, and the American people don't quite understand why you don't ask me questions about that. Now, Congressman, first of all, Gavin Newsom is ominously standing right behind him, which is kind of eerie. 
But, you know, he seems to be cracking up in front of our eyes, President Biden. He's glued to his briefing paper. He, he seems kind of out of it after he gives a few remarks. He still seems kind of lost on stage. Joe Biden's mad, and he should be. His own Department of Justice is now criminally investigating him. His own staff put him in a terrible position by sitting on this information. And his own lawyer was searching around for the evidence of a paperwork crime from almost a decade ago. So I get why Joe Biden's mad. And you could see Gavin Newsom's thought bubble in the background. He's actually measuring the drapes inside the Oval Office right now. But remember, just because the permanent bureaucratic state picked Joe Biden over Donald Trump in 2020, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to pick Joe Biden going forward in 2024. They may realize he is addled and breaking apart. And they care about power for the left. Don't forget that. It's not about Joe Biden. It's about maintaining power for the political Political left, and they may think that he's a bad bet going forward. Now, this moment, um, Congressman from CNN, lends credence to your theory. Watch. Despite his denials, a CNN review of the laptop data, as well as other public material, shows that Joe Biden did interact with some of his son's associates while serving as vice president, though it's unclear exactly what was discussed. Congressman, quickly, if CNN is... Is, is turning it over? I mean, what, what, what's happening? What's going on here? I'm old enough to remember when CNN told us that the laptop was Russian disinformation, and now all of a sudden they're weaponizing the truth against Joe Biden. He is looking more and more troubled as a candidate going forward. And I don't think it's just a coincidence that this leak went to CBS News right as the cement is starting to harden around Joe Biden's decision to assemble a political team and prepare for the upcoming primary. So blood's in the water, and I think the Democrats are circling the carcass. We're back live. Sandy on Facebook on the live stream wants to know if these documents have to do with China. And I believe that is an operative question. If these documents have something to do with China and you've got China totally funding the Biden Penn Center, that could be information that was being bought and sold. And we don't want to prejudge that. But if that's what's happening, you're talking about one of the most serious crimes against our country that a United States president could commit. We don't know that. We've got to see what's in the documents. And, you know, you may have a circumstance here, as I was pointing out with Laura Ingram, where the deep state realizes they may be facing a resurgent Trump, they may be facing Ron DeSantis, and they don't want to go into that battle with Joe Biden. They might think they're better off with Kamala Harris, Gavin Newsom, J.B. Pritzker, any of these other Democrats who seem like they can hold together a coherent paragraph. Uh, CNN turning on Biden, big Pamela Brown investigative report on all of the connections between Hunter Biden's businesses and Joe Biden. You think that's by accident? You think that you're just seeing that alongside these breaking news stories day after day about new documents getting found with Biden? I think that they realize they got to do something, move on. And whose lawyer goes looking for evidence that they committed a crime like 7, 8, 9, 10, 14 years ago, turns that information over to DOJ, alerts the Biden White House. If the Biden White House had gotten out in front of this, this wouldn't even be a thing. If the documents don't have to do with China, if they have to do with China, all bets are off. But if these documents don't have to do with China... The Biden White House could have gotten out there and said, look, you know, mistakes were made. They could have diffused the Trump situation, diffused their own situation and focused on their economic message or whatever else they wanted to focus on. But now this is becoming the mouse that roars like a lion in a lot of ways. And the tell that you could have the deep state making a move on Biden here, setting him up, is that the White House chief of staff, Ron Klain, just announcing his likely upcoming departure. Now, Ron Klain, you might not like him. You probably don't if you're watching this program. But the dude is an effective operator. He gets the bureaucracy to bend to his will. And if he sees the writing on the wall that they're coming for Biden, he's sure not going to stick around for it. He is too professional of an operator to do that. And so you'll see him appear with some major entity on the outside of the 
White House, but certainly a part of pulling the strings in our politics. And he'll be operating from there, and they'll have someone else on the inside basically wrapping up the Biden presidency and potentially moving on to 2024 without him. I, uh, I also think it's interesting that the FBI searched Biden's Wilmington home for 13 hours and even found documents from when he was a senator. So, I mean, you're looking at a group of people in the deep state that want to get rid of Trump. They probably want to get rid of Biden. And the lesson is pretty impactful. What the deep state giveth, the deep state can taketh away. Catalina Stubbe is a Florida woman in leadership of the Moms for Liberty organization, and I want to focus the rest of the episode on some of her perspectives regarding what's going on in the classroom, the front lines of the culture war. We uh, have observed some of the advocacy work in Florida that Moms for Liberty has done. I have been an admirer of some of the causes that they have championed uh, and some of the issues where they've certainly led to great progress in the Sunshine State. So take a listen to our interview with Catalina Stubbe. And we are joined now by Catalina Stubbe, who is the National Director of Hispanic Outreach for Moms for Liberty. A Florida woman, my good friend, Catalina, welcome to Firebrand. Maybe let folks know what the Moms for Liberty organization stands for and is all about. Well, thank you, Representative. This is an honor for me. This is a beautiful office <laughs> that you have. Um, Moms for Liberty is a nonprofit organization that is across the country, and we are fighting indoctrination, fighting the, this insanity, all the Marxism ideologies, and we are trying to hold accountable all that is against our children. And what is your assessment now of public education? Is it indoctrinating? Is it educating? What's your, what's your assessment? Well, unfortunately, parents don't trust anymore the educational system. And uh, we're trying to get the, the system tr more transparent to parents, that we can have access to curriculum, that we can have uh, actually the right to uh, over our children. So right now, they, the, the government think that they can push a lefted agenda um, without our permission. Well, and it seems as though the front lines of the culture war really are in the classroom. That when bad ideas emerge, when kind of crazy science emerges, it seems to be through the school system that we have to resolve those issues. And we saw Moms for Liberty really start as just two moms in Florida and emerge out of that now with hundreds of chapters around the country and advocacy that continues. Um, the vaccine mandate was uh, a part of, I think, what brought these folks together, you know, seeing the... Um, way that the medical industrial complex got turned against the American family and the student and the parent. Um, you know, what do people see on the, on the horizon as like the next round of requirements for students in the classroom, maybe with vaccines that would give people concern? Now parents are aware what, what, they, what is happening in our country. It's not only in our country, it's pretty much globally. But uh, if we keep united, we can, we can actually um, stop this insanity little by little. But we have a great example with the two founders, Tina and Tiffany. They are awesome. They are strong. They inspire everyday moms like me that wants to join an organization simply because we want a better future for our children, a strong children um, that, that really know the real value of family. Mm -hmm. And they want to protect, and we want to protect the, the family institution. And, and what do you see about the public education system that pushes back and, and maybe is harmful to the family? They are trying to change even history. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are hiding every day real history for our children. Most of them, they don't know what's happening in, uh, what happened in the Holocaust, or, uh, or they are not aware. They are probably pushing ab about abortion, but they don't know that more than 60 million children died uh, since uh, Roe v. Wade from abortion. So uh, we're trying to make things change. So you see an embrace of sort of abortion politics in our schools, conditioning young people early 
to be disrespectful of life and to be disrespectful of the family instead of celebrating those things? As, as, for, as soon as 10 years old, they, they are pushing this sexual education that is no more than, than that is nothing more than um, Marxism ideologies pushing through our children. So they are, they are trying to simply um, normalize and see it that it, as a solution and, and they never going to talk what is true, which is simply end the life of a, a human being. Yeah, and we're joined now by Catalina Stubbe, the Hispanic Outreach Director for Moms for Liberty. And I want to talk about that Marxist ideology and the way that it really, I think, uh, hurts the political left to embrace it with Hispanics. You know, we are from Florida where a lot of people have come escaping Marxism and socialism and communism. Uh, how do you think there, there can be a real involvement and outreach to Hispanics, to these ideas of family and value and um, really a lot of the principles that have made our country so great? Well, thanks God we have leaders like you, like our Governor DeSantis, that celebrate the American values, they celebrate family, and, the, and they are ready to protect our children. So uh, we are inspired by this leader. When you don't have leaders like this, or you have leftist and, and radical leftist uh, leaders in your state, you can see the, the, the results. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we actually should just only protect our family traditions and embrace them and pass it through through our most young generation. And the education system can either be helpful or harmful in that endeavor, right? Absolutely. By, and you don't believe that education ought to be neutral on this question. You believe that our education system should be explicitly pro-family and pro-America without apology, right? Even pro-God. Pro God, yes. Well, and we see with recent Supreme Court jurisprudence more flexibility for coaches and instructors to be able to right. have faith and pray and pray for the safety of their students and their student athletes. And I agree. I think that's absolutely a step in the right direction. And as we've moved God out of the classroom and out of our lives, we seem to invite more things like violence and school shooting and demonizing one another. Um, we really saw a lot of parents engage in uh, educational policy when critical race theory was being taught and students were being categorized as oppressors and oppressed. Um, what's your perspective on that as a parent and as a leading advocate? Well, this is uh, not anymore. This is the, the only thing it is, it's uh, segregation. The, the, that's the real name. CRT is teaching our children to separate them and to identify by color. Um, going to, to the God, the way God, it's, it's essential for children to have a guide. And uh, at that point, they don't even know what are the Ten Commandments. And uh, they can they can tell you all about the position in sex and or <laughs> everything about sex, but they don't know the Ten Commandments. Mm. This is awful because uh, actually they don't know what is good and bad, mm -hmm. and without knowing what the real uh, standards of morality, they cannot follow the right path. Well, and it seems like critical race theory is is so humanist right to, to to the to the exclusion of a belief in a higher power that that the fundamental thing that must drive us is our acknowledgement of our of our race and identity rather than a common collective benefit as fellow Americans, right? I mean, that's that's what I believe, that we look at the content of people's character, like Dr. King taught, not believing that our circumstances are forever ordained just by virtue of what we look like or what our background is. And it did seem that that crept into our school system well before a lot of people thought about it. You mentioned curriculum earlier, and I want to put a fine point on that because curriculum is the way wokeism gets into the bloodstream of our education system. It just truly is. And if, if what would be your message to a parent out there to tell them that they can be involved in looking at curriculum, researching, and influencing decision leaders at the state level or even at the local school board level? 
Absolutely. Uh, at that point, the, the parent that is not getting involved in the behind the scenes of the education of their children is part of the problem. For me, it's essential to know who is the board, the school board member of your area, of your district. It's uh, to, to at least going once in a year to these meetings. Take, take the day. Take the day and, and realize what they are going on because they are taking all the decisions and everything about your children. So it's not you taking the decision. However, it's you that are paying so I don't want somebody else with my money, my tax dollar payers, um, taking all the bad decisions for my children. So uh, it's not anymore just uh, helping your children about uh, homework or, or texting with, your, with, with a teacher in, or, or PTA. This, is, this has to be going beyond. And uh, you have to get involved. You really have to get involved also with an organization that defends uh, the, the children's right, the educational uh, transparency, like um, our organization. And actually, you can join a chapter. And if, if they don't have a chapter in your area, in your county, please become a leader. You can. I can. So you can. <laughs> you speak better English than me, <laughs> even if I speak better English than Biden, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're honored to have you a leader in this movement. And I really think that is the clarion call. You, people might have thought of parenting as just making sure that uh, your children have their school lunch packed and uh, are meeting the dress code. But now the demands are more rigorous. And yes. we have to acknowledge that. And those rigors include understanding what the pedagogy and curriculum are, and then joining with the parents who share our vision for a school system in the public sphere that is robust and helpful and focused on skills and embracing the great things about our country. If folks want to follow you and your work and your advocacy, where on social media can they find you? I, I know that on Instagram, uh, you are putting out information constantly. Thank you. So, um, my organization is Moms for Liberty, number four, Moms for Liberty. We are in all uh, platforms. And my personal is Kata Stube, C-A-T-A Stube. And you can follow me, ask me questions, especially for this Hispanic uh, people who doesn't understand or, doesn't, or, or really want to have this information in Spanish. I'm willing to help. Here I am to, to just... Uh, bring the transparency in education again to our children. No, it's, it is the war we must win for our culture and for our country. And we're so honored to have firebrands like you on the front line of it. Thanks for joining us, Catalina. Thank you. We are back live here in the Rayburn building and on Instagram, the feedback is God bless Catalina on Rumble. In the live chat, an interesting debate about fascism broke out, and members of the public on Rumble says Millie is an expert at losing wars. Savage. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you've got notifications turned on. We go live at different times during the day, and we want you to be here, part of the conversation, and making sure that we are driving the action and the decision-making in Washington, D.C. We have upcoming episodes regarding uh, the energy legislation that's going to come to the floor of the House of Representatives. We're going to be talking all about how to impact inflation by unlocking American energy. That'll be in an upcoming episode. So subscribe, notifications turned on. Thanks for joining us on Firebrand. We'll be back soon. Roll the credits.